Investing in Dark Magician. Welcome to the Solemn Yu-Gi-Oh! channel where we discuss everything collecting and investing in Yu-Gi-Oh! Do note, I am no financial advisor. If you need financial advice, go to an advisor with an actual license who knows what they're talking about. Now, I've already made a video like this about Blue Eyes White Dragon. So if you're interested in investing in Blue Eyes White Dragon, go to that video. It's on this channel. Check that out as well. But today, we are covering Dark Magician. Now, in this video, we talk about English Dark Magicians. So when you go, oh, but the OCG has this and that, and yes, I'm sure they do, but that's not my area of expertise nor interest. I always get loud about things that I know I can have a really strong argument in without getting utterly fucked. In OCG, I don't feel comfortable getting loud. And so I'm sure there's many cool cards out there. I know there's quite some really big collectors there, but it's not my thing. And so I'm covering the English variants on here. So when we talk about English Dark Magicians, what are we really talking about here? We're mostly talking about vintage. The vintage cards that were destroyed by all the kids in the playground year after year after year. These tend to be old, rare, and usually usually destroyed. So the ones that weren't destroyed are extra valuable. You're gonna see a lot of parallels in this video with the Blue Eyes White Dragon video we did before because they actually got a lot of the same rarities. So there's three main ones, let's say our Grail category, the Dark Magician. If you wonder like, oh, what's the best Dark Magician I should buy? It's probably one of these three. We have LOB Dark Magician, which is a Dark Magician from the very first set. We have our SDY Dark Magician, which is a Dark Magician from the first starter deck. And the DDS Dark Magician, which is a Dark Magician from Dark Duel Stories the game. Now do note, when we're talking about LOB and SDY, we're talking about first edition. LOB was reprinted into Oblivion. So right now in Walmart, you can still get LOB. The Dark Magician you pull from that is not the grail dark magician we're talking about here. So these three, which is the best one? It's once again gonna be a very similar story to the blue eyes. LOB is currently the most expensive one. However, it is, in many people's opinion, the ugliest one. The art everyone grew up with when it comes to the anime is the starter deck art, which is also featured on the DDS one. Now, full disclosure, I do not own the DDS or the starter deck one. I own the LOB. I gain nothing from saying this. I find the LOB the ugliest one, and a lot of people agree. A lot of people have most nostalgia towards that Dark Magician art and not the LOB one. But regardless, currently the LOB one is winning. Why? Well, LOB is the booster set. Technically, you can right now go out and buy a starter deck Yugi from eBay. It's gonna be expensive, probably in the thousands, but you can guarantee pulling a Dark Magician from that. You can buy a Dark Duel Stories game, open that and guarantee a DDS Dark Magician. Unless your name is Roxen. You cannot do that with LOB. If you want to buy an LOB box right now, I don't even know how much it is. Is it 25,000? Some crazy price like that. You buy that $25,000 booster box, open it, very likely you don't even have the Dark Magician. So because of that uncertainty and how hard it is to pull, that is technically the hardest to get. Now you can also check out pop reports. I actually haven't in a while. It's very possible that the LOB one is more rare than the SDY, but it's also possible that the SDY is actually more rare than the LOB. Let me know, check it out. In Blue Eyes case at least, the SDK is more rare than the LOB. You may wonder why? Well, there's two arguments there. Maybe not as many were sent in, or a lot of these starter decks were instantly opened and people started playing with it, and so many of these got destroyed. Both options are valid. So right now, LOB, it's winning, but once again, if we return to the nostalgic collectors who grew up on a card and now really want to own it, maybe eventually the SDY or the DDS will start winning. DDS is technically regarded as the prettiest one. It is the nostalgic art we grew up on, but then with prettier foil. However, pop reports for 10s and maybe even 9s are quite high on DDS because you open a game and that card is as close to mint as you can get. Whereas with LOB and SDY, you still have quite some odds that these cards are actually fucked and come out as 8s, 9s and maybe 7s. Now, we have those three grails. These three are the winners. You want to argue? Go right ahead, but it's not gonna happen. These are the three rarest Dark Magicians. Once again, if you're gonna target them, you want that first edition PSA 10. Now, DDS doesn't have a first edition because it always is the first edition, but for the other two, first edition PSA 10. That's what you're gonna target. Now, let's say you were priced out of these three. A lot of people are in the blue eyes, quite some people are in the Dark Magician. 
I get it. What is that next best alternative, let's say? Well, then we get into the realm of BPT. Once again, just like with Blue Eyes, we had two BPT releases for Dark Magician in 2002 and 2003. We had BPT 001 and BPT 007. So these were these booster pack tins. And now you could say, well, booster pack tins, they're not quite as interesting as the other three. Obviously they aren't, but the interesting thing about EPT is that the backs of these cards were all ruined. For some reason, I don't know, maybe the trucks that distributed these had a little, a little wild ride or something like that. These cards are loose inside the tins. So all the backs of the BPTs that you are opening right now are usually sixes and sevens rather than the tens you were hoping for. Now, very unlike the BPT for Blue Eyes, our BPT Dark Magicians have different art. So where if you open a BPT 003 Blue Eyes or an 009 Blue Eyes, they are the same Blue Eyes art, just different cardstock. It says limited edition. Okay, it's slightly different, but they're still the ugly LOB one. Dark Magician actually has a BPT printing with its starter deck art. So that adds a level of difference here. You have the starter deck art in ultra rare. You have your DDS in that prismatic beauty, but now you also have secret foiling on the starter deck art. This is actually the first time in this video where we have a difference between the Dark Magician and the Blue Eyes. This means more than likely BPT-001 Dark Magician is gonna get a premium over the BPT-007. Now on the flip side, you could say, well, technically, DDS Dark Magician is already our secret-ish foil of the starter deck art. So DDS is already better than BPT in that regard. However, if you want a secret rare art of the LOB Dark Magician, there's only one place to go, the BPT-007. And you would be right. So only time will really tell which one of these two will win. I think it's gonna be the BPT-001. First of all, the older booster pack tins seemingly had lower pop, so there's less out there. And again, most people are fans of the starter deck art, not the LOB art. But you know, there's one strong argument for that. In the Blue Eyes, both are BPT Blue Eyes of the LOB art in secret. So they're kind of fighting with each other, driving down the price. But in the BPT of Dark Magician, that isn't actually the case. So I would really be watching that, you know. If you got priced out of the Dark Magicians above that, I think BPT 01 Dark Magician is a very interesting card. But again, I'm no financial advisor. So that's our tier list. We have our Grails, the three, then we have our BPT. Now someone may say, oh, jump, and once again, jump. I, I don't know why, it's just not taking off. Jump promos exist, I guess, but they're not a huge thing. Maybe one day, maybe one day. Then we get into PCY. So this is not the same year anymore. This is not 2002 like our other guys. BPT-07 was 2003, by the way. A Game Boy game, PCY. That Dark Magician has different art. Just like the Blue Eyes, it has the tablet behind him. It's completely different. And so some people maybe like that art over the others. It's not quite as rare yet because again, Game Boy games are actually very, very printed. They also stay in great condition. So right now it's not doing super well. It's just like the PCK. PCK is not going to the moon or anything, but it's a relatively cheap pickup. You know, if you were priced out of all these other three, maybe PCY is something to go for. Now, finally, I can already hear the screams, but what about my maximum gold Dark Magician? Look, when we talk about long, long-term holding cardboard, we are looking for three things. It has to be old, it has to be rare, and then we start looking at condition. These maximum gold cards aren't old, and they aren't rare. So, and their condition actually is questionable even out of the box. So that's actually the one thing helping it. Unlike, let's say, a Rise of the Duelist or a Phantom's Rage or any of these boxes where you pull your cards out and apart from the ones in the back, everything's in pristine condition, these maximum gold cards are usually fucked out of the factory. So perhaps a maximum gold Dark Magician in PSA 10 will start asking a pretty penny because it's gonna be really hard to get, at least I feel so. Maybe not, again, maybe the pop report just gets flooded and they will all go to shit. But if quality control is as bad as we currently think, maybe PSA 10s have a chance. But again, they're modern and they're not rare at all. So when you hold these long, long term, a lot of people have these. So even if the prices go very high, you will suddenly have tens of thousands of people listing these and that will just instantly create downwards pressure. Whereas if we start talking about these LOB, DDS, SDY Dark Magicians, where's the thousands of people who are gonna list them? They're not out there. They were all fucked. It's just a completely different caliber. If you wanna own these cards for fun, cool. If you wanna do quick flips, you're gonna be a vendor or a shop, that will work as well. 
that's cool. But when sitting on cards very long term, you have to be aware those fundamentals have to be there. Without those fundamentals of true, true rarity, it becomes speculative at best. That is all. Hope you found this interesting. Like, subscribe, and I will see you soon. Ciao.